think about a lot of different things when I'm out with my chickens and a lot of the time it's not always chicken related. I usually end up thinking about obscure and weird stories I've heard. I really love weird stories. There are stories about the maple syrup mafia, the molasses massacre, and the biohackers. I love these stories. I mention them sometimes to other people and they have no idea what I'm talking about. Like I'm making it up or something. So I decided even though these stories are not chicken related, I'm going to share with you some of my favorite stories while I'm out with my chickens so you can hear a cool story and watch chickens. My husband said that it's kind of dumb to do because if I'm going to show chickens, I should talk about chicken related things and talking about other stories is like, doesn't, it's not, it's not cohesive. To him I say, I'm not cohesive. I've got tons of weird things going on in my head all at once. and. I don't really care. It's my video, so I'm going to do it. Maybe you like the story while you watch chickens, because chickens are cute and stories are cool. So there you go. That's me explaining. That's all I have to say. Um, Let's get into this here. <clears throat> Today I wanted to tell you the story about the radioactive boy scout. It's one of my favorite stories because it's just so weird. And it's like you never knew something like this could happen. Not in a million years. So the radioactive boy scout, his name was David Charles Hahn. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, so if I'm pronouncing it wrong, I am sorry. He was born on October 30th, 1976. He was kind of like Walter White of the 90s, except instead of cooking meth, he made a nuclear reactor. And instead of working in a camper in the desert, he worked in his mom's shed in the backyard. He discovered chemistry at an early age and began conducting his own scientific experiments by the time he was six. After his parents divorced, his grandpa gave him the Golden Book of Chemistry Experiments when he was 10. And the really cool thing about this book is, or maybe it's not cool, but it has since been banned. I didn't know that, like... I didn't know that the U.S. had banned books, but I guess they do. They just decided that they weren't going to make this book anymore because it gives out too much information to the public that they don't want the public to have. And they stopped making copies of it and copies were removed from the libraries and everything. And it's actually a very difficult book to find. I think someone said it was like over a thousand dollars for like an original copy of this book. If you find it online or on eBay or something, I haven't looked it up, but it's like very expensive. It's very sought after and it's very rare. David wanted space to conduct his chemistry experiments and his mom allowed him to convert her basement into like this really small mediocre lab. And while I admire his parents for seeing that their son was gifted and allowing him to expand his knowledge of chemistry, I also feel like they should have paid more attention maybe to what their kid was doing in the basement and made sure he was being safe down there. I say that because there were a lot of things that happened before he moved on to nuclear power dangerous thing like let's take a step back and reassess how we are parenting this kid type of things for example people started to notice at one point that his face was turning bright orange apparently he'd overdosed himself on this stuff called xanthosaxithin i don't know how to pronounce it he was trying to test different ways for people to get artificial tans so he was ingesting something that people don't normally ingest to try to get an artificial tan. I mean, <sighs> there was also this other time, uh, <laughs> he was playing with red phosphorus. Red phosphorus is the stuff on match tips that makes it light up right away as soon as you strike a match. It's highly explosive and it, it just takes a little bit of friction to light the stuff up. So he's playing with this stuff down in the basement. The whole basement blew up and his mom's house caught on fire. Since he wasn't 
being supervised or taught proper safety procedures. He wasn't wearing gloves or goggles and ended up in the hospital with shards of glass in his eyes. This all happened before he had turned 14, by the way. So he's like a young kid. So their son was playing mad scientist down in the basement. He blew himself up. He just got out of the hospital from burns and glass and all kinds of stuff. And his mom was like, I don't want you doing your scientific experiments in my house anymore. So you just take all that nonsense right outside. So he did, and he moved it all into her shed. Around the age of 13, David started learning about atomic energy. There was an atomic energy merit badge that you could get if you were in Boy Scouts. And he was a Boy Scout and he was really interested in getting that merit badge. So he did a whole bunch of research and um, the Boy Scout book that he was given actually had a lot of information about atomic energy and so he was really interested in that. I feel so impressed by this guy because there are not a lot of people who can understand the ins and out of nuclear energy but he at 13 and 14 years old not only understood it but he thought to create something seasoned scientists were trying to create and struggling with. Um Anyway, he read all the books in the library on the subject, talked to doctors about radioactive isotopes and radiology. On his quest to create this amazing energy producing thing, he kind of didn't do it the most honest way. He would lie to people and tell them that he was a teacher and that he was like trying to teach his class stuff. I think that's how he got a lot of his fire alarms that he ended up using later on. In his Atomic Energy Boy Scout book that he got for his merit badge, it had a list of nuclear energy departments. What he did was he pretended to be a teacher and he sent them letters and he was like, hey, I need more information, teach me, blah, blah, blah. And he asked them questions and they told him they were actually really, really interested in teaching him and stuff, not knowing that he was like this little kid building a nuclear reactor in his mom's shed. His ultimate goal was to build a breeder reactor. Now, a breeder reactor is basically a nuclear power plant that powers itself. I'm not explaining it very well. I'm not a science-minded person, so if you understand it better, I'm sorry if I'm explaining it wrong. It's basically like the mother of all power plants. It can create up to 30% more fuel than it consumes, so it means that it can produce way more energy than a conventional nuclear fission reactor, which is what we use some places in the U.S., and it also makes way more than coal-powered plants. So it produces a lot of energy basically. We don't use them here in the U.S. because it produces a lot of radiation waste and there are usually too many instances where people are exposed to the radiation that it creates. Basically, the problem to be solved here is trying to figure out how to make it without it making so much waste and how to make it in a way that it's stable and doesn't, you know, expose people to a lot of radiation. So that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to solve the world's energy crisis. Okay, it's not a bad goal. David Hahn took on odd jobs to pay for the things he would need to create his own breeder reactor. He also got money from stealing tires and rims off of tires and he was a little tiny bit of a thief. People didn't care for him because of that but he was using it to build his science lab. Once he was all set up in his mom's shed he put his efforts towards finding the materials he needed. As you can imagine, one can't just go pick up radioactive materials at the nearest 7-Eleven. So he ended up buying boxes of fire alarm to strip the aramecium. I think I'm saying it right, but it's basically the stuff that's in all, it's like a metal that's in all of the fire alarms that you see. So he was getting that out of them. He also took the lithium out of tons of batteries. I think I read something about him like spending over a thousand dollars on batteries just to get the lithium out. So we got the lithium out of 
batteries and he got the radium from old clocks that were made in the 50s. Radium was put into paint in the 50s and they would paint things like clocks and lanterns and stuff like that with it to make it glow in the dark. Then they found out that it was really dangerous and it was causing people to have radiation. It's not, I don't know if it's radiation poisoning, but they were, people were getting really sick. There's like this whole thing about the radium ladies. They would paint the stuff and being exposed to it all day long made them really sick. Anyway, they discontinued doing that sometime in the 50s or 60s because they realized it was very dangerous and so we don't have that stuff anymore. But he went to like thrift stores and all kinds of stuff and he bought those and that's where he got his radium. Yay! I read that he also purchased uranium from other countries on the internet, but I'm not sure how accurate that is because why are people sending uranium? Probably shouldn't be sent through the mail. Um, <laughs> I also read that it was like right after the fall of the Soviet Union when all this was happening and getting uranium from Czechoslovakia was just a thing people did then. I think that's what happened is he just, he ordered it from Czechoslovakia, but I don't know, uranium in the mail. That's exciting, I guess. So he built his neutron source for the reactor, and this was after a lot of trial and error, by the way. Um, there are the FBI files online if you want to read them. It's pretty cool. So they're like heavily redacted. Um, but in the FBI files, it said people reported he would show up to his Boy Scout stuff with burns, and one time his hair even turned green. And he's handling all these materials and making all this radioactive stuff wearing just a gas mask. And I don't even know if this is like an official gas mask that's approved as a gas mask or if it's just one that he made from materials because all the stuff he's using is like really low grade stuff he made from stuff he found around the house. Like part of his nuclear reactor was even held together with duct tape. So that's the type of craftsmanship we're working with here. I just picture him using a gas mask that he, that he made out of like a coke bottle or something you know like you see online oh goodness so his hair turned green <laughs> it took him about two years to create his neutron source and he was 17 when people found out about it he's doing all these experiments and studies for two years who has that kind of dedication you have to be like really hyper focused on something to have that kind of dedication that is impressive that is so cool. That is so cool that a kid at that age is just so intelligent, not wise, intelligent, and can understand. I'm I'm so blown away. He was getting really concerned about it, and it was kind of like this thing that was in the back of his head all the time, like, oh no, what am I going to do about the radiation I made? At one point, he was measuring it while he walked down his street, and it went five houses down. The meter was still picking up the radiation levels being high. I said that weird. I know. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So he got all kinds of worried and he did the only thing a kid with a nuclear source could do he loaded it into the trunk of his car and drove around the block trying to figure out where to dump it i i don't know why but when i think about this my brain goes to like <laughs> i don't i don't know why my brain goes to jeffrey dahmer because like there's the story of him trying to figure out what to do with his first dead body and he's just driving around like with the body in bags in his trunk and he's this teenager and it's late at night and the cop pulls him over. I just, what are you thinking? What are you thinking when you're a kid with either a body or a radiated, oh, I just, what, what could he have been thinking anyway? I, I feel like it would be easier to get rid of a dead body than a nuclear source because <laughs> at least the dead body isn't killing a whole bunch of people and it doesn't explode. Anyway, I got off the topic. <laughs> Where was I? Unfortunately, because of David's history of stealing stuff and his neighbors being a little bit nosy, his neighbors saw him loading this thing into his car. They thought he was stealing tires or something and called the cop. He was pulled over and they wanted to search his car because they were looking for stolen items. And he told them that they couldn't search the car because it was radioactive. And these cops freaked 
out as they should have and thought he was a terrorist bomber. The bomb squad came and he was taken off to jail. Let me just for a second explain how radioactive this car was when they measured the level. There's radiation levels around us all the time and it's something that we're exposed to all day long when we go out and do all kinds of stuff. They say that that exposure is about 2.0 MSVs per year. The levels of radiation coming off David's car were a thousand times higher than that. That's what I read. That's a lot, man. <laughs> Authorities knew the radiated materials at his house, as well as the stuff in his car, needed to be safely cleaned up and disposed of. That includes the shed, all of the materials around the shed, the grass, the dirt, everything that had been exposed to radiation. But no one wanted to do it. No one wanted to take the responsibility for doing this. Not only was it going to be extremely expensive and nobody wanted to pay for it, but nobody wanted to be exposed to this radiation. They argued about it for three months while his mom and her neighbors were living with small levels of radiation in their backyard until finally they figured it out and cleaned up the mess and they all paid for it. And his mom unfortunately lost her shed, which is sad because it was kind of cute kind of a cute shed. Charges against Han were later dropped and he refused all medical testing the government had to offer. So the EPA really wanted to study this kid to see if there were any side effects from what he did because he was like exposed to radioactive and for some reason he seemed to be okay and they wanted to do like a whole slew of tests to figure out what the heck kid when david turned 18 he joined the navy wanting to work with nuclear reactors but the whole homemade radioactive something or what's it's on his record the government wanted to keep him far away from their nuclear reactors so they wouldn't let him do that program. I I don't, I think they were afraid of probably looking bad because he did get press about what he did and he did have a record for what he did. I don't know how you can have a record if charges are dropped. Like, don't you have a record if you're charged with something? I don't know, I don't know. It's still there, I guess. After serving our country for about eight years, he was honorably just discharged for health reasons. And we'll talk about those health reasons a little bit later. He returned home and didn't really do much. He kind of just meandered around not knowing what to do with his life, which there's a certain age where a lot of people do that. It's hard to figure out what you're doing with your life sometimes. I don't know what I'm doing with my life, except I know I like playing with chickens. It wasn't long until management at his apartment complex noticed that their smoke detectors started disappearing. <laughs> then, a neighbor reported seeing him taking a detector from a public hallway and reported him. Police responded to the report by obtaining a warrant to search his house and made sure to check radiation levels around his apartment door before going in to search it. Those records are also online. They're pretty funny because, I, I mean, maybe they're not funny, but I think they're interesting. But it says that they like checked the levels around the door and there was a crack under the door that they just are sticking this. Can you imagine like a whole bunch of SWAT guys standing outside an apartment door, like shoving a little radiation meter under a crack to see? I don't know, it just, it's wild. They found that he was keeping stuff in his freezer and they assumed he was trying to make another reactor out of the materials that he was saving. But he was saying that he wasn't and they kept asking why he was stealing the fire alarms and keeping all this stuff and he really wasn't answering the question. But at this point it was very difficult for them to interview him and we'll talk about why in a minute. They arrested him for larceny of the fire alarms and he pled guilty. David Hahn was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, which turns out was why the military discharged him. When he was in the military, he was getting very, very like paranoid and unpredictable 
and he wasn't taking his medications that he was supposed to take so that's why he ended up getting discharged if you look at it and you say because of medical reasons a lot of the time you just assume that it's because he was freaking playing with radioactive materials as a kid but no it was schizophrenia during the interview the fbi gave when they arrested him for the fire alarm thing they talked a little bit about his schizophrenia and how he wasn't taking his medication and he was using cocaine very heavily at the time of his arrest and it was hard for them to get a clear story from him because he was like talking about really off the wall things like people coming into his house and shocking his genitals and with their minds and like all kinds of stuff like that so they ended up they had a lot of other charges against him for like the materials and stuff but they kind of understood that he wasn't in his right mind at the time so they dropped those other charges at the end he was sentenced to serve time in an inpatient rehab facility and when he got out he actually did okay until his mom committed suicide and then he took up the drugs again and oh my gosh if you are ever able to you should look up his uh mugshot picture because his face looks so like you can tell he's doing drugs and he's going through a really hard time you can just tell he died at the age of 39 on september 27th 2016 and it was not because of any of the things he did as a kid it was a result of an overdose. He had alcohol, fentanyl, and some other things in his system during autopsy. Um, David Hahn has a lot of younger followers today. A lot of people are trying to do the same things that he was trying to do because they're inspired by his story. They want to do what he did. There are so many YouTube channels that have done stories on him. There have been movies and books and shows made about him. And there's news articles all over the place. People think he's pretty cool today. Which in the grand scheme of things is a little sad because when he was growing up in the 90s, he had no friends. And people thought he was weird and made fun of him all the time. And I kind of wish he could see... The things he's inspired and that is the story of the radioactive boy scout there you go there it is now you know very exciting that's all i have for you see you later